everybody. Looks like all the storm cleanup overnight is finished, at least on the roads and the highways, because there's no reports of any closed roads or blocked intersections all the way around Atlanta. My name is Master Sergeant Cedric King, U.S. Army, retired from Atlanta, Georgia. I grew up, uh, you know, when you grow up poor, you don't know you're poor. <laughs> and uh, we didn't have a lot. It's my mom and it's me. But my mom always told me we were rich. She said, you know, we're rich, right? I said, mom, we're not rich. She said, yeah, we are rich. So we got everything we need and more. We got love. We're very wealthy when it comes to love. A lot of my friends were, were going to jail. Um, a lot of them were, weren't doing the best things with their life. And I can remember, I, I could not, I made a conscious decision that could not be me. Uh, I had to take a different path. And the military was one of those paths. When I came in the military is when I truly learned a sense of what it is to love country. You begin to love this country. You begin to love what it stands for. It began to love uh, that, that people had to fight for this way of life. People died for this way of life. And, I, and I, I found out that I could be a winner in the military, but also I could be a winner in life. Uh, at some point, I can remember, in walks some guy with uh, a ranger tab on his left shoulder pocket, on his left shoulder. And I said, what in the world is that? Something on the inside of me was like, well, that's what I'm going to do. Afghanistan is the wild, wild west. Uh, you're going through a village that you've never been in before. Booby traps everywhere. Everybody looks like they are getting ready to shoot at you. During this day, I can remember uh, something feeling different. We're going to go and do like a reconnaissance. But the place where we're going to do the reconnaissance is a pretty nasty spot. You know, everything's basically going according to plan. We got a digital camera out, we're taking notes. We're going to be done early today. I make a decision to go back outside and be without a perimeter. And when I do, it was almost like. I stepped on that IED, it digs a hole about, about two or three feet deep. If this is my day, at least let me be able to just say goodbye to those two little girls and that wife of mine, that mother who raised me, let me at least be able to say goodbye to him, you know? Nobody I know that's been a double amputee has made it. A helicopter comes in, they put like a, a mask over me and I'm, uh, I'm like out for the count. And I go into, I slip into a coma. I just remember waking up uh, that the life that you had, it's not there anymore. It's like, it's pure, pure torture, man. I couldn't make peace with it. I was in the hospital for three years. We need you to be dad again. I began to, to find the, the peace in the storm. What is this trying to teach me? This is the greatest gift because it taught me how to be a better me. It taught me how to be a better father, how to, how to say I love you and really mean it. You see, who we really are is not what we do. I had to find that out the hard way. This in here made up for this out here. So all I have to do now is love deeper. All I have to do now is encourage more. All I have to do is just be more of who I already am. I, I could do that. I'm coming back to do the ultimate things. I'm coming back to be even better than I was before.
got to dominate that part on the inside that says you ain't enough. Even though it stings and it hurts, it's gonna suck. Just keep pushing yourself. Cause you'd be proud of what you become in the, in the process. If you're injured, there are certain things that happen when you are gone that you have to take care of now. And sometimes it's physical, and sometimes it's emotional, sometimes it's financial. Uh, and I, I think for me, I've, I've been through all three of them. And by far, the worst would be financial. And that's why we need organizations like PenFed Foundation. They actually understand that there is more to it than just the hospitals, more to it than just the Veterans Administration, more to it than uh, you have nonprofits out there. You have to have people that address the financial needs that we have. You could give me all the therapy in the world, but if I don't have these financial needs met, then it won't be a holistic healing. Maybe it's just one, one of those gifts that, that comes along. God gives you a gift and say, hey, listen, you know, you're not gonna write these speeches and read them. You're gonna speak from the heart.